All right, so this is the next homework problem that was assigned. And it states that the density of carbon dioxide, and here's the symbol for carbon dioxide, is 1.98 grams per liter at standard temperature and pressure. And then it explains to you that so 1.98 grams of carbon dioxide has a volume of 1 liter. So when you see this, you need to know when you see something like that, that it means that there's 1.98 grams of carbon dioxide is equal to a volume liters of one liter. That makes sense? Those two, when you see this, this is what you need to think. Does that make sense? When you see this, this is what you need to think. You with me? All right. So now this part, this second sentence here, tells you what your quality statement is. And your quality statement then is 1.98 grams of carbon dioxide equals one liter of carbon dioxide. All right, so there's your quality statement. Now then, if I continue to read, it says if you have 1.47 liters of carbon dioxide, what is the mass? So this is what kind of stands alone. That's the starting amount. All right, starting amounts are what you put over one. So you find what stands alone, what is the starting amount, and you put that over one. 1.47 liters CO2, and that goes over 1. And now we're going to look at this equality statement, and we're going to look at what the problem starts with, what's in the top of this fraction right here, and figure out which side of the equality statement has matching units and species. In this case, the right-hand side of this equality statement matches the units and species of our starting amount. We have liters of CO2 here. I've got liters of CO2 here. So this side of the equality statement needs to go on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to put one liter CO2. And I'll put the other side of the equality statement on the top. Um, now I want to cancel the units that can be canceled. Liters can cancel, CO2 cancels. Now, in case you didn't hear me when I said this before, um, because small letter L's are difficult to tell, it's difficult to tell the difference between a small letter L and the number one, the way a lot of people write it, or uh, a capital I, the way a lot of people write it. I want you to make your leader symbol a capital L every time. Okay, that's kind of unusual. Usually when you capitalize something, it's because it's for, it has to do with somebody's name. Um, let's see, for instance, a pressure unit called Tor, T-O-R-R, -R, is named for someone, Torricelli. So we capitalize that pressure unit. We say capital T-O-R-R, -R, okay? So normally, leaders are not named for someone. Normally, when you have a unit that's not named for someone, we don't capitalize it. This is an exception just for clarity. You with me? There are some units that are capitalized because um, there are other units that you have to have lowercase letters for. It's just, it, you know, you got to know which ones to do. But just for right now, make sure you capitalize any L. So if I have milliliters, it's a small letter M for milli and a capital L, letter L. And we do a lot of milliliters in here, as, we, as you know from yesterday's lab. So uh, we can cancel out these units, this species, and we do the math. Now, because we've got a number other than, a, than the number one on the top here and the top here, we have to multiply these two numbers, okay? You multiply across the top, you divide by what's on the bottom. In this case, only ones are on the bottom. When you divide a number by one, you get the same number. So it's really not necessary to do that mathematical operation. We're only going to multiply what's across the top here, okay? All right, so we got 1.47 times 1.98. And we get this number here. All right, now the units we have left are grams. The species is CO2. And we have to figure out significant digits now. So this problem included, um, or came after I instructed you how to do rounding, okay? So I'm going to look at all the numbers in the problem. Now these, this number one and this number one, those are counting numbers. We're going to ignore those. Counting numbers are infinitely significant, okay? That means that 
um, this number here could have legitimately a decimal place and as many zeros as you want after it. So basically it's going to have more digits than we want anyway. You, don't, you can ignore it. So we just said their counting number is infinitely significant. All right, If you count things, one, two, three, four, those are counting numbers. They're infinitely significant. We could ignore those for figuring out significant digits when we're doing multiplication and or division. But So that leaves us with this measured number here and this calculated number here as the numbers we're going to use for figuring out how many significant digits we want in our final answer. I have three digits here and three digits here. And the, what you're looking for is the number, measured or calculated number, with the least digits. And since they both have the same number of digits, that's how many digits we want in our final answer. So one, two, three, those are our significant digits. We're going to underline the insignificant digits. We're going to draw an arrow to show that we're rounding it off. That's the only allowed operator in this class to show rounding off. You can't use a little squiggly equal sign or something like that. You must show an arrow to show you're rounding off. And so you put 2.91 grams of CO2. That's our final answer. And it would be helpful if you guys would put this in a box so I know that's your final answer. Okay. So, uh, again, you're going to have seven points for the equality statement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven points for the equality statement. Okay. Uh, we have um, the number, unit, species, and cancel, cancel here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So over the number one, there's six. Operator seven. Number unit species 8, 9, 10. Number unit species uh, 11, 12, 13. Cancel the point. 12, uh, um, cancel, cancel. That would be 14, 15. Operator 16. Underlining the answer is 17. Units and species 18, 19. Underlining is 20. Arrow is 21. Number unit and species 22, 23, 24 points. Okay. So that means that for just this problem, we're going to do another one together here with this one. This is going to be worth uh, 31 points for this, right? For that problem. Now, don't put that total at the top. I want you to put the combination of both these two problems at the top. Okay? But this is just how many points there are for this problem. All right? Okay, now let's go to the next problem you're supposed to do for homework. And that was to add these numbers. Alright, so we're going to add 0 0.43 grams of sodium. 0 0.43 grams of sodium. I left some space over here because I know I've got some extra digits I'm going to have to put under here. Um, and we got 1.4 grams of sodium. 1.4 grams of sodium. And then I've got 37.425 grams of sodium. So 37.425 grams of sodium. All right. Between this 3 and this 2, that's an empty slot in that vertical column. And above this 5, there are two empty slots here. Yes? They don't, the they don't have to use the arrow. Arrow is not required. It's just there for a placekeeper to help you. Uh, you cannot put zeros. Zeros there count as points lost. Okay? So as we add up all the points, any zeros they put in there, they, they could have a total of three zeros there. You count off three points. You with me? Huh? One, one point for each zero they put it on, put on there, okay? All right. You need to have the number and the unit and the species for every number you write down. So that's three points. One, two, three, that's six points, yes. They can write out the word sodium if they want to. That's fine. Yeah, that's as long as they're identifying the species, it doesn't really matter whether they use the symbol of the name. It's just extra writing. And so number, 
unit species. There's nine points. And then we're going to add everything up. Go back to the calculator. Where's my calculator? There's my calculator. Okay. So 0 0.43 plus, oh, I hit the wrong button, plus 1.4 plus and 37.425 and enter. All right, so I put all the numbers down here and the units and the species. And then to round off properly, I'm going to look at all these columns. Any numbers to the right that result from an empty slot, okay, they get rounded off. So that's two numbers that are going to be insignificant. We're going to underline the two numbers we're going to round off. You don't round off numbers to the left, only those to the right, okay? And so we're going to draw an arrow to show we're rounding off. We're going to write the rounded answer we need, 39 point, And this 5 in this place, this first place you're rounding off, means this 2 gets rounded up to a 3, okay? Uh, now, sometimes there may be a, I mean, I don't know that that would ha ever happen, but there's some college professors that may be watching this video and saying, no, please don't teach that, because there is a better way to round off. But this is what you've been learning uh, all the way from first grade on up. Well, I don't know, you probably didn't learn rounding in first grade. You may have learned it about third grade or something. Um, but there is a better way to round off. This kind of rounding off does propagate an error, but in high school, this is the way it's almost always done. I'm not going to teach you a new way to round in, in this class. Just be aware that when you take science, math, that sort of thing in college, they may expect you to round off in a different way. Okay? And it is a better way. If you want to know what it is, come and see me sometime and I'll show you how to do it. It's not hard, uh, but you just got to learn what the new rules are for this kind of for, for rounding when it comes to uh, addition and subtraction. It doesn't apply to multiplication, division, or to um, logarithms and exponents. Okay, just to this. All right, so there's our final answer. We want to make sure we put it in the box to make sure that Mr. Tedder can find what your final answer is. Okay, um, and let's, let's see. I've already figured out there's nine points there. 10, 11, 12. Underlining is 13. Arrows 14, 15, 16, and 17 for number unit species. Yes. Okay, so the combination of these two problems then, your total points for these two problems, uh, 31 and 17, is uh, 48 points total for the problem. So whatever number of points they get on this, you're going to put it at the top and put it in a box. Okay? Got that? And somewhere near the center of the top of the page is where you want to put their total points for the problem. No, since arrows are not uh, required, oh, for this arrow, yes, you get a point for the arrow, because this arrow is required. This arrow shows you're rounding off. Those little arrows, I just put those in there to make sure you can keep up with the columns and of your information if you want to, your data if you want to. Now, if you need a makeup problem for this problem, I'm going to write it down for you in class. You email me and ask for the makeup problem. Got it? Both of them. If you, if you, if you want a makeup problem, you've got to ask for it. You got it? Everybody with me?